Hey, well, good morning, everybody. Um, this is part four of my video journal. Um, although I'm still in a pretty uh, good amount of pain in the upper back, um, I feel a little bit more coherent. I can give you some more information on what's going on. Um, the surgery itself was, uh, you know, went well. Um, but uh, those of you that don't know my entire situation I advise you to go back and see that this is my third stimulator that's been put in um, this time by a different surgeon very quickly um, I'll kinda recap so if this is the first video you're watching you know what's going on in January of 2012 I had my first uh, stimulator put in um, by May of last year it was working so well that I had reduced my uh, narcotic dosage by 75 to 80 uh, percent just taking um, Lortab 7.5s as needed and that went from 90 milligrams a day of oxymorphone around the clock to um, four uh, Percocet 10s so it was quite a significant reduction. Uh, the machine was working really well. I was pleased. Um, unfortunately, in July of last year, I fell. Uh, my leg gave out. I still had neuropathy. I had a bad shock. This happened in the shower. I came down and right on the battery on the edge of the tub and damaged the unit. I moved the battery uh, kind of across my back um, had a little bit of lead migration was extremely painful um, and had to get um, a surgery scheduled to replace it um, I did do that I had it replaced in August of 2012 and uh, not long after the replacement surgery my the surgeon went on vacation I followed up with the PA um, after a couple of weeks I uh, informed them at that time that I wasn't feeling that well uh, there was a little bit of swelling around the surgical site and they assured me that this was just a normal reaction there was some fluid filling up clear fluid filling up around the pocket of uh, where the battery was and um, that I'd be fine Another period of time goes by, um, and I end up going to the ER. This is uh, the latter part of August, first part of September. And ER doc immediately calls my surgeon, who's still on vacation, and uh, he said uh, he doesn't have an infection. Uh, it's just a fluid hematoma, and he can um, go home and come see me next week. Um, by Sunday night, the 9th of September, I was in so much agony, I couldn't even walk without a cane. Now I felt feverish, and I was convinced that the unit was infected. This time I went to a uh, urgent care place. I went in, doctor took one look at it, and said, you're infected, I need to get your surgeon on the phone and let him know that you need to be treated for an infection immediately. Again, my surgeon uh, spoke with uh, the doctor on call at the ER, basically told him, do not treat me for an infection, have him come to my office tomorrow morning, and I will look at it myself. Um, I did that uh, reluctantly accepted the doctor's answer, went home, went to his office that morning. He looked at it and said, insisted that there was no infection and that um, this was just going to go away. Um, Twelve hours later, my incision split open that evening and uh, pus began coming out of my back. I was uh, rushed to the hospital where the surgeon was paged, woken up out of bed, and at 2 in the morning on September 11th, they took the unit out. Uh, further testing showed that I had a staph infection. 
Uh, for obvious reasons, I left that surgeon. I even called an attorney. Um, and unfortunately, this uh, surgeon testified for almost every uh, personal injury lawyer in the city of Buffalo, New York. Um, so it was a conflict of interest. And uh, I started getting treatment um, by another group of doctors. I had a new primary doctor a new uh, neurosurgeon and a new pain management doctor all under one building uh, that specializes in brain and spine issues. Uh, I was treated for the infection and told that after three to four months of healing and uh, monitoring my blood work for the infection that I was a candidate to have the stimulator put back in this time with the laminectomy and the paddle leads that uh, do not migrate and um, that's where we're at right now um, had the surgery this past Wednesday now just as I was getting ready to be taken into surgery I was informed by uh, the surgeon that there was a possibility that the infection traveled up the leads uh, the infection that I had and it was possible that I had scar tissue up around T9 where the laminectomy was and that would prevent him from being able to get the leads into place. He said that the chance of that was uh, slim, but um, if that were to happen, um, he was going to be unable to put the machine in and uh, we'd be back at square one and have to talk about a pain pump or raising my fusion. Um, obviously I did have the machine put in, but the leads, uh, were not, the paddle leads had to be moved a little bit over to the left of where they were placed earlier. Now that being said, I do have heavier neuropathy on my left side, uh, which is a good thing. I'm getting great coverage on my leg, but at this time she is unable to program it to get any sensation in my low back area. Um, now after I heal a little bit more um, we're going to go back and have her reprogram the machine but um, as of right now I am going to look out of the city to speak to an attorney um, about this if I have a permanent issue because this doctor refused to acknowledge even to do blood work uh, to make sure that I did not have an infection, which easily would have showed up in blood work. Uh, I could have been treated accordingly and uh, not even had that machine come out of my body last time. So um, we will see. Um, I'm not one that is a Sue Happy type of a person, but this situation um, is gonna could possibly have a permanent effect on me. Um, I'm pretty sore. Um, the interesting thing about this is, is when I'm sitting, I'm fine. Um, but, uh, lifting my arms up to my face to pick up a glass, um, or to wash my face is extremely painful. Uh, just unable to do it. Now, uh, they increased my dosage of Dilaudid and, uh, gave me Valium for seven days uh, and then I'll go back to my regular dosage of Opana and Dilaudid and then uh, next month we will begin to wean down on the medication uh, which is the the goal um, I don't want to scare anyone into not getting the stimulator um, but I do caution you to do research on the doctor uh, that is treating you first um, uh, that could save you uh, some problems down the road. Uh, I recommend Boston Scientific for the unit itself. I have fantastic reps. If I have an issue, I call them up. They come to my house to reprogram it. And um, I uh, really, really like that company. Uh, so um, day three after the surgery, um, the bandages will be coming off today 
and depending on how that looks uh, we might get a picture of that up but um, I'm gonna go back to taking it easy I'm only sleeping about three four hours a night uh, pain wakes me up but um, again I did have a laminectomy at T9 and um, you know once this heals up I should be uh, should be doing just fine uh, definitely nowhere near the pain of a fusion but uh, much more intense than the other spinal cord surgery so uh, which I was awake for um, all right Larry Fish signing off again I hope these help uh, you all that are considering having this done um, and uh, please feel free to email me um, the email on the screen or I'll have it in the posting um, to send me any other questions. All right. Signing off from Buffalo, New York. Take care.